Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Thousand Week Reich, in which we're playing as Croatia! So I was recommended to play Croatia quite a few times, and I figured I might as well try to play Croatia. Now, I know I've actually looked up a guide how to do it in the way I want to go for a spe specific route, but there's quite a few different routes for Croatia here, but we should begin with night. For the people of Croatia, there's no longer such a thing as day. The sun no longer shines in bright rays, nor do the Croatians breathe freely. Though the time continues and life goes on, it is not the same as it is elsewhere in the world. In Croatia, it is as if a terrible, endless night has been cast down onto the lands, forever cursing its people to an eternity of darnation. Under the nearly decade-long rule of the Ush uh, Utash, there has been irrevocable change. Though there have long been ethnic conflicts between the Croats and Serbs, the Utash has committed crimes of unspeakable scale. Many fled east for Serbia or northwards to Hungary. Countless more are not so fortunate to escape the Jewish people, as well face brutal crimes against them, their blood being the brain or the rain of the Croatian springtime and their ashes the snow of the Croatian winter. The partisans have been forced out of Croatia, retreating to Serbia and the mountains of eastern Bosnia. The Chetniks are holding out in the city of Visegrad, isolated and with little in terms of food or supply. There's nothing in Croatia save for Ante Pavelic's Utase. The sun no longer shines upon Croatia. There's nothing but the dark, never to end. I heard the beast say, come and see, and I beheld we'll begin with the only thing we can do. We have army, we have military stuff, but that'll be unlocked once we go through this tree. Ustaska se Volska dize. Another year dawns in the independent state of Croatia, and despite our attempts of forming a perfect um, F-word state to stand tall in the new European order. Not all is well. Perfidious races continue to ravage our sacred countryside with, while our economy and armed forces lay in shambles. The Croatian government and its people must band together in order to access this threat once and for all. And we're led by Mr. Pavelic. Um, yeah, cool. Nuke system? We're ready to play. Cool. And Oh, look at that. Extreme form of nationalism. Ultra-nationalism. Very cool. But make examples out of the detained. Military shipments from Germany. Let's do make examples out of the detained. Loyalty must be earned. Those who scheme and sabotage behind closed doors do not understand this, preferring to only come out into the light when the dust has settled. We will set a new precedent for those who wish to bring the Croatian Aryan race to its knees, submit or face utter destruction. Well, I guess we have to. And we'll see what happens. Executions in Zagreb. And today we have Franjo Tujman. The commissar read aloud, clearly uninterested. The prison's courtyard was deserted by this point as all of its inmates had recently perished. The two prison guards opened a door and shoved their last prisoner out onto the grass. He was barely wearing anything, having been savagely beaten with little time for his blood to actually clot. Coughing with that little energy he had left, Tujman looked up to see the bright sun blind him and the commissar's scowl towering over him. Picking up the prisoner and sitting him down on a single chair, the commissar pulled out his old pistol and put it right to Tujman's head. You're accused of high treason and conspiracy with communist forces. How do you plead? Falangio looked at him square in the eye, smiled, and spat in his face. Go to heck, uh, fascist piece of crap, he murmured. Wiping the spit off his face, the commissar pulled the pin on his gun and, the, and his, put his finger on the trigger. Sloboda Narodu, Tujman said, looking straight into the gun's barrel. The commissar pulled the trigger, and Franjo's lifeless body fell to the ground. The chair and surrounding grass were stained with the late partisan's blood as the two guards picked up Franjo's corpse and carried it away. Resistance, of course, is futile. And right now, let's go and do, do that one, but request A from Germany. Oh, look at that. Ever since the end of the war, war, our former benefactors in Germany have largely left us to our own devices. This has, however, brought us one disadvantage. We can no longer rely on the Germans supplying us with what we need. We will petition Herr Hitler for support in a new stabilization campaign in hopes that they support us like they did back then. And we only have two research slots, which sucks, but it is what it is. Um, promises of peace, no thank you. And then anti-Serbian propaganda. There are rumors that not everyone in the country is still not on fully bored with their racial policies. That's where the propaganda department comes in, just as Joseph Goebbels of Germany whipped the German people up in a racially enlightened fervor. We too shall help fully ustasify the Croatian people into loyal servants of the state. And get more war support. 70% stability, 89% war support. Not bad. Not bad. we got a few days left. The opening of the Germania Metro, very cool. Very nice. Germany sends military aid. Good news. Our old friends in Germany have agreed to send us weapons so we, we so desperately need. Excellent. And we are surrounded by, uh, you know, Italians, which really sucks. But also a little bit by Germany, until they fall apart, probably. Congo rebellion crush. Look at that. Free, uh, cast has capitulated. Okay. Continue the terror. It's time. With everything we need to end our internal threats once and for all, the Pogla Poglavnik shall officially sign off on it. The Croatian people will finally rule the independent Croatian state. Oh, that's not good. But I guess it's necessary. All right, I guess countrywide improvements because we can. Um, how much fuel do we have? You guys are almost done. So that's actually that's not too bad. They're almost done there. That's not too bad. Uh, as you can see, we don't have a lot of stuff here. We're still using little, literally, 
interwar rifles. So, yeah, that's not great. We can only get 0.64, so it's gonna like, go worse. Get worse from here on out. Oh my gosh, 232, holy crud. Wow, that's pretty bad. Not gonna lie, that's pretty damn bad. Burn their houses, cast them away, bring them to the cross. Um, I gotta put them on the cross. That sounds like fun first. Oh, it requires continue the terror, which we're doing right now. So, the Malayan emergency, huh? The Lord our God has instructed to all his followers that they need to spread and convert his heretics, or the heretics, so that they may one day find salvation in God's kingdom. This has been our policy against the heretics that lived in Croatia prior to our ascension, and now has become our highest priority. In Christ's name we should, nay, we must bring the strays of Croatia into the light. Well, bring him back a little bit of crucifixion. Well, that's not too bad, not great, but not too bad. Uh, that's, that hurts us, why would we do that? Well, that's not too bad either. Bring them to the cross, because we can. And then burn their houses, and then we'll cast them away. Like the horsemen of the apocalypse, the sinners fear the judgment day they bring. Our black legion are akin to these horsemen in reason and purpose, and shall bring their own judgment day to the very same sinners and degenerates that occupy our nation. Although we can do well, now we only get to hold 0.36 every single day. So we'll see what happens. Hopefully the uh, Toronto Court does not intervene in the German Civil War. Turkeys do be looking a little purple pinkish. Do they have any focus for you? No, they don't really. No, that kind of sucks. That's alright, though. Someday, probably. Hey, the Olympics begin! In Helsinki, Finland. A world divided. A coup d'etat in Cuba. Cuba. How's oh, China looking? China's going really nice. I like the blue. I was going to pop my back. And our father. They were uh, <clears throat> packed tightly into the chapel, shivering and barely conscious. A group of about 50 people sat down in the makeshift pews. Brothers and sisters, I'm so glad you can make it all today, the chaplain said. He received no reply outside a cough or two. Friar Tomislav Filopovich was not unknown to his congregation, a sadistic priest known to most as Brother Satan. He had been tasked with the forced conversion of Serbs and Jews to Catholicism. A job which he did with brutal diligence. I am disappointed to hear that many of you still haven't yet seen the light of God, but there's still hope for you all yet. As a token of my generosity, I grant all of you a chance to repent before entering God's kingdom. Motioning to the guards to lock the doors in the chapel, Friar Tomislav donned his gas mask. <laughs> <laughs> As lingering yellowish gas began flooding into the room, some people inside panicked and ran for the door, only to be fired upon by the now masked guards. Others huddled together, quietly weeping, slowly turning into a hellish choir of coughing, gradually fading into quietness. Making the signs of the cross with his golden crucifix, Friar Tomosov began giving the suffocated remains of his victims their last rites, muffled by his mask. Ashes to ashes, from dust to dust, become Catholic. It's a must. I don't know. Cast them away, though. Croatia is for the Croatians, and those who wish to not share our destiny have no place in our country. If that means making them into poverty-stricken refugees and other inferior statelets, then so be it. Perhaps they'll be better off if they actually live in squalor with their own kind. Man, German space flights. Very cool. God, that's ridiculous. Holy crap. Yeah, we have to be at war with one of the basically major power, then. Wow. To get it probably lower. And the sound of, uh, okay, people, things are happening all over the world, man. Things are happening. Alright, village fire. The quiet darkness of the night descended upon the village. The mothers, fathers, and children all went to bed, their fears dispelled by the, li by the light of the moon and the stars. The threats of an Utashe attack disappeared to return tomorrow, yet, if one looked towards the hills, they would see the faint orange glow of the coming fire. Crossing over the hills into the valley below, the Croatian soldiers laid their eyes upon their target, an idyllic place untouched by decades of war and terror. But looks would not save this village of Serbs. The soldiers armed themselves with their flamethrowers and came out waves of fire. Plumes of smoke rose into the air. The darkness was lit up with the bright colors of red, orange, yellow, and white. Some jumped out their windows to the ground below, and the soldiers shooting them were uh, where they fell. <laughs> they barricaded the doors to make sure that no Serb could escape their punishment. One that had already been willed by the Poglovnik, uh, the people and Almighty God, that night, as the crusaders of the modern era departed. They heard the screams of the darned amongst the flames of an earthy heck. And the village turned from wood to ash. Out of the heart of man came evil thoughts, or come evil thoughts. A terrible swarm of adventures. After a painful campaign in the countryside and cities, we finally control that which we own. Our troops can now be present in every village, street, and nook and cranny where saboteurs may hide. With our internal racial enemies finally laying in ruins, it's time we hung up our axes. Cool. And there goes Einstein. Alright, Ethiopia. Italian East Africa declared war on the city of Ethiopia. Oh, Africans and Ethiopia. Italians always killing each other. All right, Sweden, good job, I guess. Oh, we're missing artillery. Actually, we're not doing too bad on weapons right now. What is our template like, actually? Uh, we're not even making divisions. Oh, that is. Well, it could be a lot worse. Uh, honestly, it could be a lot worse. Uh, go medium, go low, go high. <coughs> also, I'm not showing you what uh, our templates are like. Uh, Excel, cool. 
Are we there yet? Mirko asked. He'd been on the road for almost three hours now, having been forced to go on foot to wherever it may take them. Little Mirko and his only surviving relative, his bigger sister, Katarina, has been forced from their home just outside Visegrad by the new Ustaza campaign. Choosing to head east of Serbia, she hoped that maybe their estranged father would be there. Quiet rats, the Black Legion soldier yelled behind him, prodding his still warm gun into her backside. He was not much older than her, likely a new recruit given his trigger-happy attitude. Walking fast with Mirko in her arms, they continued onto what they hoped would be salvation. How are, <clears throat> how are they going to make money? Where were they going to find their papa? Was he even alive? They surely figured things out as time went on. Her thoughts on the future were interrupted as they walked around a bend, and almost immediately she spotted an opportunity to escape. Extremely dense bushes are known hideouts for partisan ambushes, and in this part of Bosnia they were especially prevalent. Jumping into the bush, her gamble paid off. As if on command, four men emerged from the bushes with automatic rifles in hand and quickly gunned down the young Cro Croatian. Donning scruffy beards and such caca... Uh, Kasha caps. They're undoubtedly Chechniks. Saying very little to each other, Katarina and Mirko followed the men off the beaten path to a village flying a flag that she almost never thought she'd see flying again. The black Chechnik standard alongside the royal flag of Yugoslavia. At last, a breath of freedom. And we take our economy. With their internal stability finally dealt with, there's yet another issue that must be addressed, the Croatian economy. Having been completely ruined during the post-war period, there can only be one real cause. We were not thorough enough with our eradication of Zionist influences. For the sake of the state and its people, we shall finally finish what we started in 1941. Hey, both these finished at the same time? Nice. Um, actually, let's go back here. Do that one. Um, land auction? I really don't know. Strategic theorem on resistance, irregular asymmetrical warfare? That's not bad, actually. Guerrilla warfare? Wow. We actually might need more stuff here. Combined operations, we won't have a lot of stuff for that. I kind of like this stuff, though. That's pretty good, too. Offensive theory. Defensive theory. I like the entrenchment. Training. More population. I don't know. Huh. And these aren't mutually exclusive, either. Get more, a lot of organization on this side. It's not too bad. Um, these guys are kind of mutually exclusive. Hmm... You get a lot more population, which I do like. But still. Soft attack 10%. Production cost goes way down. National cause. Ooh. And then you have this side as well. Air. And that's not bad either. Hmm. So, let me see here. So, we, for this one, we get 15 organization for the army... 15 org, 20 org, and some for tanks. 20 org, 30 org, that's a lot. 35, Jesus. 40, I'm just looking for infantry, really. 40 org for this one. These guys get 20, plus 25, or 25 on both sides. Really, 25 on both sides. Still get some entrenchment, 25 on both sides. Um, I'm sorry I'm taking so long with this. I don't remember this. these land auctions at all. So the one on the right gives you more organization. This one gives you 10, maybe 15-ish more, 10-ish, 10, 20. You can get up to 20 for oh, uh, that side. Oh, that's tank stuff. 30. We might just need more manpower, honestly. Like, we don't have that much. Ooh. <clears throat> you know what? Maybe we'll just go with this one. You get more entrenchment anyways. Offensive theory, we're gonna probably need that. And you can do both these sides and get more population anyway. Strategic theorem. My apologies for taking so long. I just I don't I it's been a while since I played Thousand Week Reich Cell. I'm not exactly sure which one is best. I do want to get to early mobilization so we can keep improving this stuff too. Also, I think we're training our planes. We do have a few planes here, not much. Yeah, we're still trying to train these guys. Uh resolution fails, that's fine, whatever. How are our ships? Are they fully trained? Yes, they are, that's good. We have 34. Yeah, they looks yeah, that's not too bad actually. Alright, swarm of Avengers. Not bad. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Ah, uh, I wish we had another military factor, though. Hmm. Ah, oh, okay. A terrible swarm of Avengers. On the ground, Milos ordered. Five of the prisoners were forced onto the ground, kneeling in front of the captor. Their heads were forced down. Commandant Lubjo Milos pulled out a crumpled piece of paper and adjusted his glasses to read it. He looked largely uninterested in the whole ordeal, sweating through his cap and having another hand on his gum. You've been accused of collaborating with international jury, communist forces, and robbery. On the power ordained me as commandant, you have all been sentenced to death by firing squad. Crumpling the paper and putting it back in his uniform pocket, the condemned glanced up saw and saw what would be the grave, a hastily dug shallow pit just outside the camp. 
It saw his shovels in it from yesterday, and the bottom was already beginning to collect water and become muddy. I said, down, he barked, slitting one of the prisoner's throats and kicking him into the pits. Guards, aim your rifles, the commandant said, looking towards the five soldiers which stood behind the remaining four prisoners. Milos looked at his watch. He, he was 15 minutes late to a luncheon with his bosses, and tearing us with something that was unacceptable and the Ustaze has high command. Looking to finally get, quickly get this over with, or this minor lay over with, the commandant finally gave the order, aim, ready, aim, fire. Goes to building more support. And now we got to do, retake our economy, and which does it remove economic depression or does it? Purge the HSS or unite the Home Guard. So that's going to be interesting to do because we have to make a choice which will actually help uh, determine what path we go down. But before we do that, uh, here are the National Spirits German funding for suppression. Pretty good. Dreams of a Greater Croatia, which is pretty nice as well. We have Italian influence in our politics, which is not very good. We also have economic depression, which is also quite bad. And we also have a divided home guard, which obviously we cannot train or edit units. Banat demands concessions, seemingly low in supplies. The rogue SS state of Banat has demanded an immediate payment with the threat of conflict. How should we respond? Well, if we keep them that way. Nope. Wait. Wait. They go to war. Start border with Romania? What the hell? Franjo looked at the house. It was a nice looking place, two stories and red siding. He looked at Marco. What the deal? It seems fine to me. Marco sighed, a Jew family used to live here in the Ushtajate. Didn't clean the place when they got it done, so we gotta use it. Or gotta do it. As they stepped inside, it became obvious why they were here. It was impossible to find or hide the trail of blood that came down the stairwell and descended into the basement. Some disgusting stench filled the air. Franjo was already cautious. Are you sure there's nobody here? He asked Marco, who nodded in response. The first room was the kitchen, which was disturbingly grisly. Blood was smeared across the walls and floor with two cutting knives on the floor. Before Franjo took a step down, Marco stopped him. Hey, 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 don't step in the glass. When Franjo looked down, he saw shards of something glass all over the floor. Next came the basement, and as he walked down the stairs, Franjo noticed the stench was even worse. And then when he opened the door, they found the family. Now, we could do Unite you know, the Home Guard or Purge SS, but we're going to try to purge SS. HSS, just because it is highly unlikely to be successful. I think there's about a 90% chance to be, to be unsuccessful here, which is exactly what we want to go down a certain route. And honestly, like, I. Well, I'll, I'll talk about that when, uh. My idea when. Uh, I finished reading this. Ever since the state's founding, we've shared an uneasy alliance with the more liberal HSS in Parliament. Although they have been largely been sidelined, HSS leader Vlado Macek has since died in Yazunovich. There are many within the Ustaze itself who find themselves enthralled by the more radical beliefs of a rapprochement with the West, one of which being one of Pavlovich's closest advisors, Mladen uh, Lorkovic, which will confront him directly about his flirtation with foreign powers and bring him to justice, followed up with looking towards Hungary. We may control Bosnia in significant parts of what was once Serbia, but it is not enough. Our Croatian brothers in Hungarian occupied Vojvodina cry out in oppression as Hungarian butchers slaughter Croatian families like animals. For the sake of humanity, we must bring an end to this injustice and unite with our lost brethren. So, I think we actually have to lose here to go down a certain route. So, spoiler alert, eventually Bosnians will try to rise up and I'll probably go to crush them, but I think we need to lose a border war with Hungary. So, we'll see what happens. Hopefully we can do well. I mean, I'd like to win, obviously, but sometimes to do certain paths, you cannot always win. So, it is what it is. Um, so, yeah, it is what it is. Cool. And let's put you guys here. Boom, boom, boom. Looking not great. We got some casts. We got some attack bombers. But the Lorovic trial. Mladen Loroviki or Lorkovi, or Lorkovi, yeah, as a controversial figure in Croatian politics. Although an early follower and close friend of Pavlovich, many of his theories are considered a bit too radical to say the least. Although a firm believer in the state's racial policies, he's still considered by many to be a martyr and by extension a threat for the state's hardline positions. We'll put Lodovic on trial for his vicious activities, and hopefully his growing thorn a snip before it's too late. We eagerly await the traitor's fate. <clears throat> Not guilty. Terrible news. Mladen Lorovic has escaped the justice of our court systems by having his case dismissed altogether, undoubtedly bribing the judges involved. The rat escapes justice, which is good to have. And, uh, yeah. Before this does anything, I'm going to save again anyway, so. Nothing else has really changed so far. However, I would like to see if we can, like, read one of these. I mean, I like to do the Croatian army. Earl Warren's been inaugurated, huh? The Croatian army has still gone far since its founding of the independence of 41. Still, however, there are many things which continue to hold it back. The primary issue, besides being a lack of professionalism, is a lack of modern equipment. Most of our units continue to use German or worse Austro-Hungarian rifles. Another problem emerges in the fact that our army has not yet made for itself a single doctrine, instead of focusing on such matters as killing Jews and Serbs. If we hope to be feared by more people than defense of civilians, we must modernize our armed forces and fast, for the horizon looks grim if we do not. So I should keep going with more and more uh, stuff like this. Let's go next. That's good. XO, the Dutch government. Goodbye, Dutch government. See you next time. And I will look to get out here. Oh, how much do we have? 0.66. We, we went back up. That's very nice. Very, very nice. Oh, we get that. Oh, Indonesia. Oh, Indonesia's here. Well, kind of. 
That's actually really disgusting for Indonesia. Very, very disgusting. Ah. The beginning of the border war. Alright, so just in case, I'm going to save here anyways. <clears throat> just because this is going to be important for us later, too. Our Croatian brothers in Vojvodina carry on cry and pain as oppressive Hungarians attempt to hum Hungarianize them. No longer, after years of economic, political, and military stagnation in a degenerate state, the Poglavnik, Poglavnik have decided that now is the time to finally boot the Hun menace out of what is rightfully Croatian lands. Maybe we should bide our time. Um, I think we have to fail here for this one. We could probably honestly pretty win. Ooh. Because now we can look towards Hungary. I think we need to lose a war. Um, if that's the case... Um, let's come down here. I, I do want to win, but still. Oh, wait, they just went to war with us. Okay, I didn't realize that. I did not realize that. Okay, holy crap. My bad. Hey, we lose, we lose, I guess, but still. That's why we make saves. Oh, and the fear is dead. Okay, well, it is what it is, I guess. Okay, I didn't know they would go to actual war with us. I might have to reload this, maybe? That was really bad for me. Oh, this is a grim uprising. There we go. Oh, look at that. Croatian chaos focus stream. This morning began as another day in Zagreb. A bubble of peace, isolated from the violence and chaos of the rest of Croatia, where there was no camps, no Ustashe soldiers hunting down Jews and Serbs. It was peaceful as one could have under the Ustashe. The bubble of peace, however, was suddenly punctured by a car speeding towards the Pogodanek's palace. As it ran through the gates, an explosion shook the earth as the gate had been destroyed by a suicide bomber. Quickly, multiple partisans followed through onto the palace grounds, overpowering the guards. They went to find Ante Pavlovich. The Pogodanek armed himself, and along with his bodyguards, barricaded the stairwell to keep the partisans at bay. A battle ended and the partisans coming up the stairs, only to see him jump from his window to the ground a story below. As Pavlovich hit the pavement, bleeding profusely with, him with broken legs from what he had endured, he found himself surrounded by partisans. His death would be short, with him not even managing to beg for mercy before he was filled with bullets. The partisans draped the flag of Yugoslavia down from the windows, chanting brotherhood and unity. Ustashe would not let go. Of, let this go on. Tank and bomber units were dispatched to quell the partisans. Zagreb was in a state of war unseen in the, nearly a decade. Though all partisans involved were killed, and Andrija Artukovic was declared po Poglavnik that night. A message had been sent to the Croatian people that the Ustashe was not forever. Civil rights have already broken out across the country, most prominently in Bosnian cities such as Sarajevo, Visegrad, and Banja Luka. Croatia burns. Chaos in Zagreb. Devastating news. The counties of Kyodor Dir, Poglavnik, and Ante... Uh, Poglavnik, Ante Pavlovich, and the serene capital of Zagreb in anarchy and chaos. Taking over the late Pavlovich's duties in his unfortunate absence, Andrej Artukovic has been selected as leader in the hopes of bringing the independent state of Croatia out of the darkness it finds itself now in. Well, they're killing quite a few of them, actually. Encryption's nice. Gets more encryption, I guess, as well. Why not? Hmm... We're losing the capital, which is not good. If he's come up here, though, he probably still hold out probably a little bit better. Hold for now. That's fine. How many do we have? 3,000 versus 4,000? That's not good. The French Revolution? Uh, if this goes really poorly... Oh, it does not exist. Our head's hung low. Our triumphant race. We'll see what happens. We just gotta hold out for a little bit longer, that's all. Okay, I don't care about... Let's come to Russia right now, or whatever it is. Sorry, I don't really care about it right now. So I think we need to lose this to actually have a, one route we want to go. Surprise! Actually, Romania didn't do anything here. But this is a border war. This is not a border war. This is an actual war. But it's inconceivable. Despite all of our state's sacrifices to liberate the Croatians in Vojvodina, we've been forced to sign a humiliating peace treaty with the Hungarian dudes. While we have managed to preserve our independence, there's no doubt that our people have been irreparably demoralized by this crushing loss, and will undoubtedly blame our government for what was effectively a war for nothing. There you go. And now, I think we gotta be ready for the Italians too, but you never know. So, we still have Shrem, so. And that's, we need the, um, yeah, defeat of Shrem for now. Go cool. chaos, and then summon parliament. There are a few options left for Artovic in order to bring the nation back together. However, there's one left that, as far-fetched as it might seem, might just work. An emergency session of the Croatian parliament will be called in order to hash out a more concrete way of maintaining national unity and security in a state that's falling apart at the seams. Although the parliament is merely an advisory body for the Poglavnik, the appearance of the unity might just be what we need. Parliament meets. 
For the first time since the uprising of the Zagreb uprising, the Croatian state parliament has met in a hastily convened emergency session. Immediately, Artovic, or Artukovic, was officially and unanimously sworn in as the next Podlevnik, succeeding the recently murdered Ante Pavlovic. From there, however, the state of parliament quickly descended into chaos as Artukovic attempted to propose acts that would clamp down what limited opposition remained citing the possibility of several parliamentarians being involved in a conspiracy with Jews and Freemasons to restore the rights of Serbs. Several HSS lawmakers walked out in protest, while others, along with multiple Bosnian MPs, berated their Ustasha counterparts, declaring that if the latter passed Artukovic's proposals, Croatia would be, would be torn apart. After a brawl between Ustasha and HSSS members broke out on the floor of the state parliament, a vote was finally held, resulting in a victory for all of the proposed acts, though it is not clear or though it is not, as Artukovic claimed, the Jews are Masons. The highest levels of Croatia's government have been infiltrated, in truth, by the societal tensions of Thurn II, as said by a Bosnian lawmaker, tear the country apart. Let's get to work. The Bosnian, Re Bosnian Rebellion. Those backstabbing Muslim dudes have gone behind our backs and rebelled against our rule. This level of treason requires only the greatest of punishments. In the name of the state and its leaders, these so-called Bosnians shall be shown just what the master race can do. Zad Dom Spren Spreni. So now we actually have to win the war against these guys, so I'm not sure where we're going to be. Let's go around Zagreb for now. Ah! Wait, the se second Hungarian. Usually, doesn't the game start off with these guys killing each other? I don't want these guys to beat the living crap out of Hungary, but riding in Sarajevo. The death of the Pavlovnik has shaken our state to the very core, and our precarious provinces and Bosnia are no exception. Luckily, being bought up by Bolsheviks and Serbs, these rabble rousers have been called for ridiculous requests like more rights and self determination. These deviants must be dealt with immediately. Send in the home guard. Actually, do they need focus tree? Government of National Salvation. Well, you know what, we'll see too, why not? I hope, I really do hope Hung Hungary loses, though. You beat us up, even though I actually wanted us to lose, but still. Wait. Oh, no, no, no that's not them. Um, Rebirth of France. Serbian Civil War, that's good. Actually, I, I've played a Serbia once or twice. Not bad. Bosnian MPs pick sides, with the future of Croatian state uncertain. Many Bosnians with Britain Parliament have been almost as restless as the protesters in Mostar and Sarajevo, with all of them opposing any further action against the riotous brethren. Without any actual progress act uh, made after six hours of what sounded more like a seedy tavern than a national parliament, the secession or session subsequently ended without anything accomplished and the Bosnian politicians quickly leaving Zagreb at a suspiciously quick pace. Why do we hang them when we have the chance? Yeah, that's cool. Bosnian independence declared. The independence of Croatia's greatest test has finally come. Setting years of mistreatment under the Ustase despite being considered equal citizens on paper, Mehmet Handi, the informal and spiritual political leader of the Sarajevo Ulem, Ulema, announced on the radio that the Bosnian people have chosen to finally pursue their own destiny after decades of servitude to others. Already reports of militiamen loyal to the independent Bosnia have seized armories and began expelling Ustase politicians. In response to this act of high treason, Ar uh, Andrija Artukovic has declared the revolt a lawless rabble founded, funded by Jewry and mobilized home guard against revolt. Zadam Spremni. There we go. Yeah, that's pretty much what I kind of consider what would happen here. Let's go in immediately. Probably. All right, now, slash and burn. Why not? Now, leave nothing for the left, for the stragglers, and remember the people that supported them. The home guard will ensure that a scorched earth policy would be enforced so that we remains in Bosnia. It's nothing, uh, nothing that can challenge our rule any longer. Oh, they don't have unique focus tree. That kind of, that's kind of sad, but whatever. They don't have that many, that much strength either, so that's good. All right, I guess after that one, because Italy's going to come try to fight us too eventually. No mercy for partisans. Um, we get more attack. Arms smuggling. The war with the Bosnian rebels have drained our resources dangerously thin, and those in the government now fear that our army's preoccupation in ending this conflict may leave us exposed to our neighbors who look at our unprotected land with a desire to cover up Croatia. We will begin importing weapons through the black market so our army can prosecute the war to its end and leave Croatia stronger than ever, one that our enemies will not dare to touch. Go right here. Good. Go right here. Cut these guys off. Nice. Albanian Revolution. Look at that. Nice. Now, if you would want to get into here, I'd be okay with that. Sorry, Yevo. 
an ultimatum. Oh, crap, from Italy. As if our problems could not get any worse, our former ally turned advisor in Rome has demanded that we submit to their tyrannical rule, promising to help us crush the Bosnian rebels in exchange for disbanding the Ustase and placing an Italian king on the throne. There's a very vocal minority in the government that supports that would, in all purposes, be capitulation to a foreign power. However, our war exhausted populace might actually welcome the change of pace in exchange for economic and political stability. After consider careful consideration within Artukovic's inner circle, they finally decided to put the people first, except their terms. Um... I'm going to save here too because I think I'm, I'm going to have to use console commands for this because I want to say no just because I want to go a certain route and I don't want to have Tomislav here just yet. Oh, yay! Suck it, Hungary. Please don't go to war with Italy. Please, 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 please. That's good. Come on, baby. Oh, how much drink do they actually have? I have quite a bit of strength. Oh, Himmler, cool. Slash and burn, baby. Slash and burn. And arm smuggling, of course. And then follow it up with invite a scapegoat. Ooh, that hurts us. Well, I guess we will. There are those who see our wars against the Muslim Croat rebels to be unlawful and prefer a peaceful settlement to the conflict. We need to invent a scapegoat to whip the public into another frenzy that gets them behind the war. The Bosnian ulema were always neutral towards the Jewish saboteurs that have attempted time and time again to set us back. Perhaps they, are too work they too are working with Jewish powers to usurp the Ustase? Maybe. Maybe, we'll see. Hey, not bad. And Sarajevo is once again ours. Yay! Now we're gonna die at the hands of probably of the. Uh, oh, we can't change these guys. God dang it! Come over here. Uh, the Italians. Why? Good luck. You're gonna probably die down here. You're probably honestly gonna straight up just die. There you go. Hang out. Victory in Bosnia. Mujo, have you heard? It's over. Sitting at the table, Mustafa looked to his wife in shock. What? He cried. Who won? She looked to him, her eyes teary, and grasped his hand. He understood. Dark clouds were once more over the Bosnian horizon, and the dream of fresh air had been cast away, perhaps forever. Bosnia weaves through Croatia has proven victorious. With the Ustaje's victory, cooperation has become a distant memory. Already a reign of terror has begun, and rumors of torched villages, of mountains of the dead, have begun to make the rounds. Ustaje has secured their shaky government for now. Croatia has triumphed. Her enemies have fallen aside. Long live the Poglavnik. Long live Croatia, death through enemies. Long live Croatia's two greatest leaders, the Tomislavs of the modern era, Ante Palovic and Andrija Artukovic. Zadam Spremni. Does this change at all? One last offensive? We've done really well already. That's pretty easy to beat them. I mean, I pooch. It was pitch black outside. Zagreb had been suffering from widespread power outages since the insurgency began, but even as the dust settled, it seemed as if Croatia had finally reverted back to the Dark Ages. The tranquil night sky was suddenly interrupted by a barrage of gunfire within the Croatian parliament, as unidentified members of the Home Guard stormed the building with one goal in mind, a coup d'etat. As the room to room fighting quickly began, or quickly turned to the typically dull building into the war zone, a small group of soldiers and the Pusha's leader finally made it to the Poglanovic's office. <clears throat> Busting the door down. They quickly found Andrija Artukovic uh, fumbling around his desk trying to grab a gun. Mladen, he cried, looking at the man who stood before him. Mladen Lorovic, or Lorkovic, had long since tired of the late Poglovnik's repeated failures, and to him, Andrija was more of the same, although a short, stubby man with no real charisma. Mladen uh, Lorkovic was nonetheless a skilled negotiator who had managed to bring the army to his side in what we would consider as high treason. I should have known it would have been a rat like you, Artukovic yelled, his trembling hand grabbing his gun and pointing it at Lorkovic. You've made a grave mistake here, Mladen, but I'm sure as heck won't give you anything to gloat over, he said, quickly putting the gun in his mouth and pulling the trigger. The sun rises over New Croatia. Ustazi overthrown. An uncertain future lies ahead for a divided country. Pretty normal. Pretty darn normal. Hey, look, we got everything here, too. Uneasy alliance. Okay, so this is where we wanted to be. Ending the depression. Ooh. Can we start with that one? Croatia in a state of siege. A siege not by any foreign nation, any rebel group, or anything of the sort, but a siege on our economy. Since independence, we have struggled to keep anything resembling an economy afloat, while other nations have managed to succeed and prosper at least a little bit. Croatian leadership has accused many different groups of being responsible for it. Jews, Bolsheviks, Roma, Serbs, and so on and so on. However, if we're going to survive, we just can't blame other people for our problems forever. we got to fix our economy. We've got to. Oh, what happened here? Okay, so those guys are gone. That's fine. Whatever. Uh, we have no PP. But I'm glad we were able to get to early mobilization. And then we're going to go ahead and do, as much as I want to do that stuff, one was the village. Amar rode his way home from the battlefield upon a horse. Traversing fields and valleys for days, he longed for what that what he missed, or missed in the heat of battle. Fighting for Bosnia had brought almost a dreary homesickness, one which could only be quenched by returning to the place where he had been born, grown up, and still lived. He had not served in the invasion of Yugoslavia, and was ambivalent in regards to the Ustashi rule. When the bugle call of Bosnia rang out, however, he answered. Yet he could not help but worry. He had heard tales of the Ustase burning down villages in response to the men going to war against them. 
Although he dismissed these words as unfounded and assured himself that there was little reason for concern, he was met with a different sign upon arrival. From the trees hung corpses of the dead, filled with bullets, they torched... The torch remains of the house is still dotted of the landscape, touched by nothing since Ted reared its ugly head. Amar looked around, struck with the pangs of an ind indescribable emotion. The mutilated bodies that lay upon the ground and among the trees were not just Anemus, unknown comrades that he had seen on the battlefield. They were his friends, his neighbors, his wife and daughter, victims of unspeakable horrors in their own right. The village that Amar once called home was no more. My occupied homeland, traveled village, my home. An easy alliance. There are many of you that remember the legacy of the great Stepan Radzic and his sacrifice for just and fair Croatia. We too have not forgotten. For years, a Croatian peasants, peasants people or peasants party has sat on the sidelines of Croatian politics while corrupt politicians have dictated what is best for them rather than what's best for the people. We will form a real government with a peasants party so that national revolution shall be accomplished from the bottom up rather than from the top down. Cool. There's so much here. The Balkans are like the devs for a thousand week right. I really put a ton of effort into making a story for for the Balkans, which I love. I love what the devs have done. And I don't play the Thousand Week Rack as much as I really should, but kudos to the devs. But there's one thing, like I said earlier, that I wanted to like bring up. Like, You know like how Kaiser Redux has like path guides? I think Thousand Week Rack, at least especially for the Balkans, could really use one, because there's like quite a few different routes that we could take for Croatia, probably Hungary, and stuff like that. So I would love to see a path guide someday, but then again, I'm just a guy on the internet. I'm sure they don't really know me that much, or very well. But Croatian influence. Following the death of Ante Pavlovich in Croatia, the already fleeting nation has already fallen into chaos just days ago. The Bosnians rose up against the former fascist masters in the hopes of creating an independent state. Our tough advisors tell us that we can use this chaos to our advantage, and finally move into Croatia proper, just as Mayor Nostrum dictates. However, it is an extremely risky move that could jeopardize our already unpopular influence in the Balkans. How do we proceed? Demand a submission. Ooh. Ooh, wait. Wait, is this supposed to be ours? Hold on. Um, just in case. Um, yeah, I'm gonna make a lot of saves. Demand their submission, an ultimatum from Italy. This is supposed to be for Italy, isn't it? I mean, if I can control what Italy does, I mean, I will do that one, definitely, but still. Right, awesome Civil War, very nice. Encryption is very good to have as well. I'll uh, keep going for more, because we can. Another Civil War, because why not? And rest on a nice edge. Our radio speeches speak of a renewed national unity under a new government. However, the situation beneath it all continues to remain precarious. The Croatian Presence Party is understandably still suspicious of the Home Guard's commitment to liberalization and rapprochement with the West. As our government consolidates its power, something that will have to be addressed as time goes on. Pretty much. I do want to do this so we can get some better consumer goods, construction speed, stuff like that. Um, yeah, that would be actually really good to get all this stuff going. A new four-year plan would be very nice as well, but... The Christian army, of course. Lessons from the invasion of Greece. Not oh, Yugoslavia's demise. The worst is behind us. Economic depression. Alright, cool. Where are we at? Are we actually losing political power? No, point three is. Like, nothing. So, The Danish Revolution. How is Germany doing? And also, I'll be honest here. I set it up so that the Toronto courts would not intervene in the Civil War. So, it is what it is. Vargas takes his own life. Oh, crap. Well, that's something. The power struggle. The relationship between the Home Guard and its unlikely ally in the Croatian Peasants Party is one that few believe can last for long. As we consolidate the new regime's grip on power, there will be those who wish to bring down this alliance and with it a return to the party squabbling over the old government. We'll have to act carefully if we want to keep our fledgling regime afloat. Not the game again. Oh, consider victory. Oh, rebuild the Home Guard. Oh, I kind of like that. Addressing the economy. Um, let's do one of these. I want to do these. Fix the food prices, maybe? That'd be kind of nice. New four-year plan. Empower the Alliance of Syndicates first. The Alliance of Syndicates, Croatia's largest and only government-sponsored group of unions, will be instrumental to our economic success. If we empower them, and give in to at least a few of their admitted long list of demands in regards to workers' rights, we'll hopefully be able to ensure our future prosperity, even if it is the cost of short-term economic benefit. Man, we have, like, no stability, man. This sucks. Feldmaya, huh? Speer, Manstein. Oh, boys. Oh, boys. Was Actually, does Slovakia have a unique focus tree? Oh, that's a Wehrmacht. Uh, you know, emergency Wehrmacht. Choosing a cabinet. Our first order of business will have to be how we restaff the new government cabinet. Well, we can restaff with military loyalists. We can win over the lower classes by appointing democratic politicians. We need to remove those violent thugs. We need to change in a new cabinet. Well. Hmm. I don't know. Let's, let's do change. Let's try change. Wow. 
What happened here? Lithuania has Riga? What are they what are they Riga? And Belarusian social state and other Riga? Um or Latvia is still here too, nothing here, and Estonia probably nothing here too. Yeah. Uh if you want to read that again, please go right ahead. I'm gonna send not militia. No, give me half you guys too. Go here. Oh, and we have some of this too. Good. How many more days we got? Ten that's pretty good. Yeah, give us some time to get some retrenchment and organization first. They do have some tanks too, but it is over a river, so yeah, we should be okay. Why do they keep going to war with those guys? I mean don't get me wrong, I like it when they beat up the Romanians, but still. Getting rid of that would be get, at least starting to get rid of that would be very good for us. Oof. A Prague uprising, very cool. After that though. Oh, oh there go those there goes those guys. Address the economy. Probably do that one. Let's look at how Croatian socials and policies made by the old Ustazi government were a failure to say the least. As we become heavily reliant on the Germans and Italians for trade, our economy spiraled into economic collapse when theirs crashed. Now after a period of civil unrest and rebellion that nearly tore our country apart, we'll have to finally address the future of the Croatian economy. Oh, there's Slovakia. Oh, Slovenia. Slovenia, my bad. National socialists, huh? Oh, they actually have a somewhat of a unique focus tree. Yeah, they do. Wow. I like it when the Toronto Corps do not interfere. I don't really want to just battle royale Germany. Alright, a new four-year plan, maybe? The race laws. The camps. The Greb Knights. Formulate the Doomverat. Severed ties with the fascists, huh? The new state. I like that. Croatian self-reliance. Embrace Italo-fascist doctrine. Fascism. Join our fascist brothers. Oh, oh, it's false. Okay. That's interesting. Mm, I might just keep going with it this way. For new new, new four-year plan for now. In 1936, Germany began a policy known as a four-year plan to recover the economy lost by the First World War. The failure of the Weimar Republic's economy and the Great Depression. This program was massively successful in making Germany an economic and industrial powerhouse. We should look back on what Hitler and Goring were doing and formulate our own policies to create a new four-year plan that matters of money. Our great nation has not been doing well during what should have been a peacetime for Croatia. Economic hardships and a closest allies combined with the mounting debt had left the economy in complete ruin by the time Palovic died. Now, with the old government swept away, we can finally address the ever-present issue of how the Croatian economy will be rebuilt. Uh, free, free people for now. Free people, because why not? Why not? Let's see what happens. And then we'll do the Bosnian question. Let's rebuild the Home Guard first, though. When we took power, the Ustazi aligned generals and a government were forced into retirement or executed. This has severely depleted our ranks of competent officers and infantrymen with which to command. We need to restructure our armed forces to become a modern fighting force and securing uh, oh, something which both Italian and British contractors have offered the services to help with. Sounds like a good idea. We can release my political power though. What's China doing? Did they? They're still fighting. Okay. And occupied Japan, Shigeru. Oh, what happened in there? Why not? The Free French Republic. Wait, you became the French? What? What? They can become a French commune here? Holy crap! That's actually kind of cool. I'm not gonna lie. Alright, and then we're going to keep going with the one economy every other time, so. Steel, do we need steel? Yes, we do. Oh, yeah, actually, that'd be really good to get some steel for now. So we can actually build some more weapons. <clears throat> if Croatia is known for one thing, it's their steel industry. Steel is one of Croatia's largest resources, and one of our few exports. In order to economically recover, our economic our economic ministry has suggested a new program of exploring our steel industries. <clears throat> Um, and exporting far more steel than we previously did, while some have protested on the basis of workers' rights and such. We can assure them, and they will receive the same rights as everyone else in Croatia. And we're doing all this encryption, decryption stuff, just because it's really good for combat. It helps, like, our divisions actually in combat. Land doctrine is good in all, too, and, like, actually getting better guns, too, is good, but... Having intel on your enemies is still very beneficial, as well. Looks like the GGR is going to do pretty darn well. Ah, Shabir's winning, huh? Oh, Speer, daddy. Yeah, they're running out of stuff. And who's... Ah, uh, Reinhard. Dig or die. I like that. Oh, we can do the Christian army stuff. Oh, now we can do all the other stuff. Nice. Well, we're in the middle of a economic, or diplomatic or political power grab. We can just do military stuff if we really wanted to. Italian military advisors. Toronto Accord. 
Huh, okay, well. I want to fix the food prices next. With their depression, the prices of food have skyrocketed, and many crows can no longer even afford to take a bite to eat. This situation is a national humiliation. We must bring food prices down to an acceptable level and keep them there. That way, we will be able to hopefully greatly reduce the number of starving crows and feed our people. However, unfortunately, this comes at the cost of hurting our farmers economically, something we'll have to look into into the near future. Because there's so much here I want to get done as well. I know I'm not focusing on the political stuff, which we'll honestly probably do in the next episode, maybe. We'll see what happens. I might do every other one here. Fixing the food price would be really good, though. Um, how about probably just a little bit, not much. Nice, good, 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 good. So now we actually have some steel. And we're using all of it up immediately. Look at that. Ah, oh, we actually produced some stuff. Thank God. Oh. Alright. Here yet? Nope. Um, reduce our reliance on Germany. Probably that'd be good since, well, we're not doing too much with them. Well, let's do another one over here. The race laws of Bosnia in question. Polish democracy restored. What are the race laws? Oh. Are they actually attacking us? No, they're still attacking the Romanians. Okay, whatever. Uh, the race laws. One of the Ustazes first passed laws were the Aryan race laws that considered Su Serbs, Jews, Romani, and others seen as non-desirable, stripped of their civil liberties, and forced to either convert to Christianity or face almost certain death. While many wish to see this remnant of the old regime swept away completely, many within the government have instead proposed a more humane edict of the race laws. But how does one deal with something that's controversial as a piece of paper? Hmm. Very carefully, I guess. Actually, who won here? Lochjek. All right. A homogeneous Serbia. They actually might come try to kill us later on. Well, at least people killing each other. Not us killing each other. That's just good. The camps. Do we like camps? Um, I guess we do the Bosnian question, but I'm doing another one of these first. Reduce reliance in Germany. Don't get us wrong, Germany is a perfectly fine ally. Kind and welcoming stalwart and a relatively mutual ideology in regards to the Jews, commies, and so on. However, as great as they are, we can't rely on them forever. Unfortunately, but understandably, Germany might be a bit upset to hear it, so we shall tell it to them in the kindest way possible. We're looking for different trade partners. That's all. Just different trade partners. Okay, so you guys are not too bad. I don't mind having some more infantry, though, so... Buzz zone first, thank you. What do we actually have here? Do we have artillery? We have none. So, get some more guns going first. Go at least a 14 comp with for now. Military police is nice. We could probably honestly lower that. To actually, replace that with this, maybe. Ooh, actually lose some stuff, because we don't probably have it researched. Initiative is okay. Or just not reduce it at all, because that helps us with defense, actually. That's actually not too bad to have. But race laws. We love laws on race. The race laws. One of the Ustazes first passed laws were the Aryan race laws. And that considered Jews, Serbs... Uh, Romani and other people as not undesirable, stripped of their civil liberties, and forced to either convert to Christianity or face almost certain death. While many wish to see this remnant of the old regime swept away completely, others within the government have instead proposed a more humane edict of the race laws. We only need to amend them. I guess we'll yeah, I'll abolish them for now. Why not? Let's see what happens. Find new trade partners? Yes. Croatia has a problem with trade. With us reducing uh, <clears throat> our trade or alliance with Germany, that leaves us in the rather problematic predicament that nobody wants to trade with us. The list of reasons is vast, with reasons from better trade opportunities elsewhere to our brutal terror campaign against certain people being cited. If we want to survive economically, we need to find partners who are perfectly willing to look the other way in the name of profit. Just businessmen doing business, that's all. That's all we're doing. Um, uh, it's not bad. Artillery is just not... We don't have anything for artillery going. Anti-tank is fine and dandy and all, but... Hmm. Not great. Southward at Army Command, huh? Yeah, there's still plenty of a good fight against the GGR. Actually, who's, who's leading Italy right now? Oh, Mussolini's still here. Okay. Cool. Rekindle a relationship with Yemen. Yemen, 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 Yemen. Oh, do I actually have anything? Nah, nothing really worth it. Alright, so let's go back over here and do the camps. I do the Bosnian question first. The provinces of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Ever since the incorporation, or their incorporation, into the into the Croatia, they've been a dubious part of what was meant to be a state made by and for Croatians. While well, Ante Pavlovic saw them as Muslim Croats, their treatment and subsequent rebellion against Croatian rule hasn't been anything but that. We have to decide here now what to do with Bosnia and its diverse population of Muslim Bosniaks, Catholic Croats, and Orthodox Serbs. Ah, the Balkans, always a hodgepodge of instability and unrest. Always. I guess we'll go with two, maybe, for now. That's fine for now. It's fine. Cool. There you go. Good luck. And I do want to train these guys, but I don't want to hurt any more tanks. You guys train. Oh. Oh, we can actually convert them. Okay, that's actually really nice. Just go and convert them, then. Reduce by one. We don't negotiate with terrorists. Cool. Cool. 
strengthen the lumber industry. Though Croatia is not especially known for her factories or forests, she possesses a high amount of them, a rarity outside of Germany. We must strengthen our lumber industry not only for the purpose of further money, but to cut down forested land that will soon be home to factories and, of course, smokestacks. This genius two-pronged idea will hopefully work wonders of bringing us over to the other side of our economic recovery. We're getting better, slightly better, slightly, slightly, slightly better. Not by much, but hey, it's better than what it was earlier, so. Ooh, do we not have enough guns or something here? Republic of Bosnia, huh? Oh, we, I guess we don't have this core, that makes sense. Yeah, so that oversight's fine. Actually, what's on this division? Oh, that's not bad. I'll duplicate that. Let's get start using the other one for now so we don't have to waste as much stuff. Should save a little bit on equipment. Dreams of a free Bosnia. Ooh, I don't really want them free, I'll be honest, though. Uh, the calls for Bosnian freedom, while done violently, is something many that within the government have grown somewhat sympathetic towards. While ardent Croatian nationalists have demanded compromise in the form of letting the rebellious provinces go free, there's an equal amount of opposition that would prefer the Bosnians to become independent just so they don't cause problems for Zagreb again. Should be free? Nope. I might be choosing the wrong things here, but I don't know. There's, hmm, we'll see what happens. Seven and one, huh? Lorkovic. The worst is behind us. We still have economic depression, huh? That's pretty bad to have, I'll be honest. German funding for suppression. Do we need... Oh, we only need one of the falling. Okay. As much as possible. So we gotta wait for that one. Let's do the camps. Names such as Jasinovich are nuts essentials chills down the spine of even the bravest souls. Their legacy, while invariably untainted with the old regime, however, it might not need to be swept away. While the Croatian Peasants Party is strongly opposed to their continued existence, there is a possibility that each that these death camps can be repurposed as more humane prison labor camps to help rebuild a country and state rehabilitate its criminals. How should we how should the most visible stain of Ustazi rule be dealt with? With a lot of violence, I guess. I get a war propaganda, but that'd be okay. It's a grab knights, huh? Oh, there goes people's Germany farming subsidies. What countries such as Russia, Germany, France, and Britain moved away from farming in the late 19th and early 20th centuries? Farmers still form the backbone of the society in Croatia. However, uh, instead of advocating for an industrial society, we must support our nation's great farmers. They are the strongest members of society, always rolling with the punches that they are dealt, be it with from Serbs, Bolsheviks, Jews, or rich. For all their hard work, we must reward them with subsidies. What happened to Japan? What's going on here? Wait. Did you? Are you coming back? Are you making a comeback? Uh, that looks like the Imperial Flag of Japan. Um. Okay. Well, we'll see. Well, yeah, I guess. Nationalism first, I guess, huh? Emergency drafts. Blame the minor. <laughs> Blame the minorities. Nice. But names such as... Uh, I think I already read this one. So, their legacy while invariably tainted with the old regime, however, might not need to be swept away. While the Croatian Peasant Party is strongly opposed to their continued existence, there's a possibility that these death camps can be repurposed as more humane prison labor camps to help rebuild a country and re rehabilitate its criminals. Hmm. Ah, I did that one for now. And redistribute to the poor. Though some men, even within our government, would call the idea of redistributing wealth through the lower class Judeo-Bolshevism or the opposite of Croatia's founding principles, the fact that it is such that there's nothing but lies. The poor men of Croatia are just as patriotic as the rich, but the fact is that they do not make the deals with the devil to fatten their pockets. The poor obviously are the truest patriotic Croatians. So, as one can obviously discern, we are not socialists in the slightest. Nice, nah, 37 days is really nice. Do we get at least one more? Oh, we did. Where are we getting a military factory too? Nice, good. Good, finally. A military factory so we can get some artillery. So then we can actually make some divisions after we get some medium tanks too. Oh, so like Hungarian tensions. Nice. I'll help Slovakia wins. I, I really don't like Hungarians right now, as you can tell. Semi industrialized economy, huh? Well, that's not great. We're looking good on guns. Artillery's really bad. Anti tank's pretty bad as well. Um, you're still training here, huh? Of course, so these were militia divisions earlier. So these guys are actually now better, which is very good. That's one beat up. Hungry some more, please. Please. Come on, Shapiro, all you have left is Austria, or was Austria, Bohemia, Alsace Rain, and Nord Nord East Frankreich, or I guess. Something like that. Now oh, we're doing better than that. Nice. Good, 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 good. Redistribution to the poor. And we'll also do ooh, military advisors. I think for this one, it probably makes more sense for to Toronto Accord military advisors. The balance of power in the world has become overwhelmingly stacked in favor of the Western powers. My apologies, I gotta do this one real quick. Um uh, do this one. 
wartime we are using 1936 rifles holy crap so the balance of power in the world has become increasingly overwhelmingly stacked in favor of the Western powers, coalesced into the so-called Toronto Accord. The U.S. themselves possess an army that many consider to be the second most powerful on Earth, but barely outclassed only by the Germans. To become a real fighting force in the troubled world we find ourselves in, we'll have to embrace American military advisors to fully bring our nation out of darkness. If you like to read about the Italian military advisors, please go right ahead. So, as much as I want to align with them, I think for this campaign we're probably not going to, but maybe in the future we will. So we made all those autosaves, or just saves. Oh, hello. Okay. Banat. Banat. Bro. Keep trying to kill these guys. Up. What happened here? Why does Latvia own... What the heck? Why do they own that? Alright. Followed up with what? Um, Zagreb Knights. Yeah, we might as well. Our coalition within or with the Croatian Peasants Party has been an extremely sensitive one that many believe wouldn't last. Yet here we are. As we finalize the formation of the new government, the Democrats have become increasingly opposed to the dominance of the military and political affairs. The only way to resolve these issues is by sitting down with the HSS leader, August Kusotic, and finally resolve this once and for all. Cool. Um, ooh, ooh, can we elect anybody here? Oh, that hurts our consumer goods. We'll get more construction speed. That's not worth it. Um... Consumer goods factors goes down by 1%, which is not much, but still. You get a lot more political power. Consumer goods hits hurt, and a lot of organization is lost. I like this one, too. That's actually not too bad. I like this one. Ooh, as much as the one that actually pee, pee Oh, we choose two people here. Do we? No, we don't. Okay. Trade deal, opinion factor. Um, stability would be actually really nice to get. Uh, maybe we'll just wait for early mobilization at this point. So grab knights. And let's conclude this episode with... The worst is behind us. We have done it. Our economy is no longer in the same old state of suffering as it once was. We've gotten past the economic slump that plagued us for so long after independence, and are on the road to a successful economy. Now is a perfect time for celebrations, but we must look further than that, to an even greater economy, one that is no longer a backwater among backwaters, but a success story among among success stories. But hey, if you enjoyed our first episode in which uh, we, uh, you know, um, are playing as Croatia, please do consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I guess I'll see you tomorrow as we figure out what we're going to do with Croatia. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.